Back in December of 2019, my father was diagnosed with stage three colorectal cancer. Upon the shock of this diagnosis, I did some research of my own. Did you know there's seven kinds of poop? Yeah, there's marbles, caterpillars, hot dogs, snakes, amoebas, soft serve, and Jackson Pollock. There's actually a real chart for this. It's called the Bristol stool chart. The chart's super important to make sure you have a healthy stool. A persistent change in bowel habits or blood in or on your stool can all be signs of colorectal cancer. My dad experienced blood in his stool, which three doctors said was a hemorrhoid. It definitely wasn't. Soon after my father's diagnosis, he started radiation treatment. A couple weeks after the radiation, he began chemotherapy on my 16th birthday. We didn't celebrate. When my dad got home from chemo, he was tired, nauseous, and anxious about what was to come. He just went up to his bedroom to rest. My father would have chemo treatments every two weeks, and the first few days after the chemo would always be very quiet. He spent most of the time in his room trying to manage the side effects, nausea, a loss of appetite, and fatigue. Family dinners used to be a time where we shared stories and hung out, but that changed quickly. Sometimes my father could not come to dinner at all, and other times he would push himself to join us, but we knew it was a challenge. I was used to being surrounded by an energetic dad that would run five miles a day and take me to baseball games, but some days he didn't have the energy to leave his bed. I started to miss our competitive ping pong matches and going to sporting events. Although I missed these activities, I realized there were other things I could find for us to do together. We started doing these 1,000-piece puzzles of different baseball stadiums. Even with this more chill activity, there were a few days after each treatment where he wouldn't leave the bedroom and we wouldn't do the puzzles. My dad required lots of doctor's appointments and my mom needed to go with him, so responsibilities around our house changed dramatically. I did extra chores, helped prepare meals, and continued to care for my brother on the autism spectrum. My special needs brother requires constant supervision. Then COVID hit. Caregivers could no longer come to our house and schools were closed. While my parents were dealing with doctor's appointments and treatments and now COVID safety protocols, keeping my brother safe and engaged fell to me. COVID added other new challenges. My sports and activities were canceled. I couldn't see my friends. I had to be extra careful because my father's immune system was compromised from treatments. This meant I had lots of time to think about my dad's situation and do research. I would Google questions I had about my father's diagnosis. I often came across articles about families much like my own, and the articles would document life in the family while dealing with colorectal cancer, but most didn't have a positive outcome. This freaked me out. But I learned quickly that my random Google searches were not providing accurate information for my family's situation. I was finding studies that were 10 years old and were no longer relevant. I realized I needed to either ask my parents or my dad's doctors for accurate information. Now, I've stopped looking on the internet for answers. And after five radiation treatments and 10 rounds of chemo, my dad's doing great. He had a complete response to treatment. He's back to running, playing ping pong, and our new tradition of doing puzzles together continues. I don't want any other family to go through what we did. Colorectal cancer is 90% beatable with early detection. So if you're 45 or older and have a colon, get screened. If someone you love is 45 or older, remind them to get screened. And if you have symptoms or have a family history of colorectal cancer, talk to your doctor and get screened. It saves lives. And lastly, if you're a teenager with a parent already diagnosed with cancer, know that you will get through this and you aren't alone. There's a list of resources and support for teens. Scope it out.